peace to you and you and you and all expressions of consciousness. Welcome. So what is non-duality? Literally, it is saying there is no duality. There were no two hands on your screen right now. There were no two things, only one thing. This will sound strange because you see many things, you touch many things. There is you, there is he, there is she. Thus duality, night and day, black and white, red and blue, apples and oranges. But have you ever investigated your nature of your reality to confirm that there is duality? Let's do that right now. So let's say, let's go with this most simplest assumption. You assume you see many things. You assume there is a multiplicity, a diversity of objects within your awareness. Are there? What you are perceiving is being perceived itself. Meaning, the one that is looking is being perceived. Sight is known. Seeing is known. Your whole perception itself is being perceived by something else, something that cannot be perceived. So if everything you see, if the one that is seeing itself or himself or herself is being seen from the to conceptualize the one at the back who is perceiving the one who is seeing from this person's point of view not that it's a person from this point of view there is only one thing there's only one experience of observing the one that is seeing so let's say this is now let's say this is a person seeing outwards here. It's seeing the world. How does it know it's seeing? It doesn't know it's seeing. This is an experience of seeing. So something else is confirming the experience of seeing. This is the action of seeing. This is that which is perceiving the action or the feeling or the knowing of seeing. Just as you cannot turn your eyes around and look inside the body, you cannot turn your attention around to perceive what is perceiving your experience of seeing. So from this perspective, there is a multiplicity and diversity of objects. Yes. But if we delve deeper and go back further, there would have to be an awareness of this one that is seeing the world. That which is perceiving the world is like the person in the cinema perceiving the film. The people in the movie believe they are separate from each other. But the one watching the screen only sees one screen. 
Also, the screen itself does not change whether the movie is on or off. It is just to use within its analogy, it is just the holder of the space for the experience of the movie to happen. Just as there is something that you cannot perceive, don't even try, because <laughs> the mind is too limited. There is something that knows that experience is happening. That is that which is allowing, which is holding the space for so-called seeing to happen. You dream at night. It feels like there are many different dimensions, walking, jumping, touching, opening a door and walking through. It seems like there's duality within your dream. Then you wake up and realize it was quote unquote, just a dream. That means that whole reality was existing within one dimension of thought because that's what dreams are they are mind which is just a thought so something was perceiving that dream it's the same way within what we call the waking state something is perceiving your experience right now if you think of one second ago you have to think of one second ago, meaning you have to use mind. Therefore, it's no different to a dream. This doesn't last forever because you have to sleep at some point. There is no continuity in any state by definition. Dream state, waking state, so-called out of body state. None of these can be the truth because all of them are finite yet all of them are known something within you can confirm you had a out of body experience can confirm you are in the waking state can confirm you had a dream that must be consistent and not within the experience itself You have to have a certain detachment from an experience to speak of the whole experience. For if you're in the experience, you might miss something. You're in the moment, you might miss something. You will miss something. And this is the same with sensation. The body seems to be separate from what is being perceived, but the body is only a sensation. And that's all you genuinely know of your body. You are aware of sensation. Mind calls it a body, but as I've already explained, mind is known itself. So mind is being perceived, so that means the sensations that are known in mind are also being perceived by something subtler. So the experience of body, the experience of all percepts are known to something subtler. They are all experienced by the experiencer. Why do you think you cannot feel all the cells going through your body? Why can you not feel your ears unless they're throbbing for some reason or you touch them? Because there are no ears. There is no body. There is only arisings within that awareness. The arisings of sensation come through the grace of that which we truly are. Some may call source, some may call God. 
something called pure consciousness. There is no actual choosing. Of course, if something happens to the body that you are attached to, you deal with it. But essentially, it is just a sensation that is perceived by something subtler. So your essential nature, understand what essential means. Something that has to be. It's not your essential nature. If you cannot feel your body all the time, it cannot be that essential to you. If you can still survive when you close your eyes, sight cannot be essential to you. The only thing that is essential is what you already are. I'm not talking to the ego person right now. I'm talking to you, my fellow expression of consciousness. So from the one true genuine perspective of that which is outside of mind, that which is perceiving the one speaking these words, there is only one thing, hence no two things. And that one thing is experience doesn't matter what is within the experience experience can consist of thought sensation happiness sadness people cause watching a tv screen having a baby getting married not getting married <laughs> Being Superman, it doesn't matter what is within the experience, it is known by the experiencer that cannot be experienced itself. So from that perspective, there is no duality. From the mind's perspective, because mind is finite and mind is being experienced itself, then there is duality. So all that is being said is that from the ultimate, the truest, as far as words can describe, reality and truth, there is no duality. It's not easy to uh, speak of non-duality using dualistic means, such as speaking on the internet. But this is all just an experience being perceived by the perceivless perceiver. Have a wonderful day. Love, love, love.